Oh my goodness. Hello, darlings. Welcome to Looking Beyond the Veil. I'm sure. Come on in. Say hello to me. Just give me one sec. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. I'm having hot flashes. Come on now. I'm a little too old for that. Hey. <laughs> hey, C. Phoenix. Strawberry. Hello, darling. Senjo. Wendy May. Oh, glad to have you join us this time. We missed you. Diane. Hello, lovelies. Hello, Diane, darling. Michelle. Hi, darling. So glad you guys could come in and say hello. I mean, you're waiting for some, you got some hacks, some home hacks. I, I hope that you're going to enjoy. I just scribbled down a few things, but I hope you like them. Anyways, Tiger's Eyes. Hi, darling. Hello, love. Hello, Ross. Hello, Ross. Thanks for saying hi to Spirit. I appreciate that. Let's see if I can bring it down a little bit. See if we can get her on and get her done here. Oh, thank you for the floating hearts. Love them. I love them. Hello, everybody. Hello, Phoenix, Starlin, how you doing? How's the cats? How's those kittens doing? Mine's roaming around. You, you know what? I, I just cleaned that, that cat litter pan today. Scrubbed it all out. Yep, scrubbed it all out. Fresh litter in there. And there was a lineup. Yeah. Right away, Uni went in there. And, and then the other one was lined up waiting. So, yeah, you know, it reminded me of a pub. You know, you get to go to the pub and, and there's this lineup for the bathroom. Hello, Marie, darling. I didn't see you come in. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? I didn't see you come in, but I hear everybody saying hello to you. Oh, there you are. Okay, you came in under your channel name. Hey, darling, how you doing? I just came from Marie's channel. Marie needs you guys out there. So if you get a chance to go out, when is it? Thursday night? Thursday, she's going to be doing five seas. Come on. King, queens of the sea. Got to go out there, support her. Listen to that Pisces reading. Come on now. Good evening, Vendetta. Thursday for sure. Okay, if you can give us the time, that'd be great. That'd be great, darling. Kings and queens. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. King Neptune and Queen Neptune. Look out, bum bum. Ba -da. ba 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 ba. <laughs> Come on. Pisces, Pisces in the house. All right. <laughs> Please hit the thumbs, appreciate that. And so does YouTube. We've also gotten some new subscribers on this channel. We are open um, moderators. We are open to anyone that wants to come in. So do keep an eye on the chat, my darlings. I know you always do. But we're not subscribers only. We are open. 6 p.m. your time is good for me. It's 10 p.m. my time. So 6 p.m., says Wendy May, is good time, Reverend Marie. Or 10 p.m. her time. Uh, oh, that is 10 p.m. her time. So 6 p.m. is 10 p.m. in the U.K. Got it. Got it. It takes me a while sometimes, but I got it. Midday here in New Zealand. Yes, indeed. Senjo, I earned a purple heart over the weekend. Was wandered in the line of duty taking care of his animals. Okay, let me see if I can bring that down into my language. Because we all know that Senjo is from another... another <laughs> plane of existence and God love her. 
but um, I think what she's saying here, wounded. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. I earned a Purple Heart over the weekend, was wounded in the line of duty taking care of animals. Bless your heart, darling. Are you okay? I hope you're okay, darling. Yes, and congratulations, Senjo. You deserve it. You deserve to get bitten and wounded taking care of animals. <laughs> Don't mind Vendetta. She's a bit dark. Uh, I'm glad you're good, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I made a joke of it was my daughter. Oh, well, yeah, well, you know what? My dad was full of wise words, and one of the things that he used to say to me a lot was, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I mean, what kind of great wisdom is that, you know? If you don't laugh, you'll cry. <laughs> I know that's not what you meant, Vendetta, darling. <laughs> Wolfman just walked in the room. How you doing, Pete? <laughs> My friend's daughter got got bit by a pupil. Holy crap. What the hell is going on out there? You know what, you guys? I'm so glad I'm retired. I went to the grocery store the other day, and I could hear a man cursing and swearing loud. Very, very loud. Very, very angry. Cursing and swearing and going on. I thought, what the hell is happening? You know, and the first thing I'm getting is I got to beeline it to my car and, and get the hell out of here. He's in a van, probably about 45, 50 years old, on a cell phone. Effing, effing, I told you, you effing biatch. F, effing, F, F, screaming. At the top of his lungs. I thought, what the hell is happening to people? What the hell is wrong with people? What are you going to talk to people like that for? You know, if people get to you at that, that point, if people drive you to that point of madness, because that's madness. Much <laughs> like the reading I did yesterday, well, Pisces going a little bit oh, cuckoo there. <laughs> But you got to realize that it's madness if it's taken to a, that kind of an extent. Then get away from them. Now stay away from them. If somebody tries you that freaking crazy, yeah, breathe. You're right, see, breathe. Francis popped into the room while I was ranting and raving. Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of madness, too, when I'm ranting and raving. Wing it. <laughs> Hello, Francis, darling. Okay, I got some strawberry water. Yes, strawberry. I got some strawberry water. Cheers. And it's very yummy and very refreshing. All right, I'm going to stop you and yapping. And I'm going to start on these hacks that I have. Home hacks. And it is yummy. Um, before we start with home hacks, I do want to tell you guys to be aware. It's a wild world. Be aware when you're in change rooms or when you're in a bathroom. Put your finger up against the mirror. And if your finger goes right to the mirror, if there's no space, that's a mirror. But if you put your finger against a mirror and there's a space, so you can see, like, shit, there's a space. That's a two-way. Okay? Keep your eyes open. Be alert. You don't want to find yourself, you don't want to find yourself on, on the friggin' internet, sitting on the toilet, you know, or changing your clothes. Like, there's, it's a crazy, crazy wild world. So... <laughs> yes, indeed, see? <laughs> yes, indeed. Sun Watchers, come on in and join us. I'd love for you to come out and join me. Come on out. I know there's more of you out there. Don't be shy. 
there's no judgment here. Nobody's going to yell at you for coming out. So come on out and say hi and enjoy some home hacks. Okay. Okay, well, the first thing we're going to talk about is cleaning your belly button. Now, you know that a lot of people don't realize that you got to clean your freaking belly button. So just take some. <laughs> yes, Wendy May. Come on now. Ask yourself, when's the last time I cleaned my belly button? Just washing your stomach doesn't really do anything. You got to get in there and clean your belly button. Now, don't go too deep and hurt yourself because it can hurt if you poke too hard. But just grab yourself a, a Q tip and dip it in some alcohol and then just rub around in there. You will be amazed at the dirt that will come out uh, out of your belly button, the bacteria. You will be freaking amazed. And then just keep doing it until the Q-tip comes out clean. And then just take a nice dry Q-tip and wipe the alcohol away. Strawberry. <laughs> Mine don't need it. It looks like the top of a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> okay, so I need a bucket, says strawberry. Yes, yeah, so you get an OD. Well, even with an OD, take a Q-tip and and just go around it. You'd be surprised. Okay, see, Bing's handing out buckets. So also, I, I want you to do something right now for me. You're all alone. Nobody's listening. Now take your finger and rub it behind your ear. Okay, do that. Rub it behind your ear. All right. Now smell it. And do it to the other side. Rub it behind your ear. And smell it. Okay. If it smells cheesy, uh, there's a buildup of bacteria there. So clean behind them ears. Mine smells like a garden of roses. Well, it don't smell cheesy. <laughs> I smell delicious, says Vendetta. Me too. <coughs> All hairspray comes off me ear. All hairspray comes off me ear. There you go. I love it when you start talking like it, like shark. <laughs> All me ears. The shampoo smells like shampoo. Make sure you clean there. Clean the belly button and clean behind them ears. Mine smells like nothing. There you go. I'm surprised you didn't say it didn't smell like aliens. Okay. Mouth breathing. Now, I, especially if you've got children or grandchildren and you see them doing something in their mouth. Do not tell your children, do not mouth breathe. Breed. <laughs> Whoa. Spirit. <laughs> Bring it down, darling. <laughs> Damn. Now let's go past most breeding. Damn. Uh, well, we are fish, right? We carry our eggs in our mouths. <laughs> I do not go around smelling the aliens. <laughs> but tell them not to mouse breathe. Okay, because what happens is after a while, the chin recedes. And instead of, this is why some people have no chin. Have you noticed? And one in particular, what the hell is her name? She's got a YouTube channel. She's so funny. I can't remember her name now. But anyway, she said, I wish I knew this when I was a kid. Because her, her you know, she's got beautiful structured face and top lip. And then all of a sudden, it sort of goes on a slant. And there seems to be a bone missing there. And she said she used a mouse breed. Breed. Well, what the hell is going on there? All right, I'm going to go right past this because obviously I'm taking a stroke or something here. I don't know. So keep your mouth shut That's what I'm saying. <laughs> keep, your, keep your mouth shut. Breed. Yes, I know I keep saying breed. <laughs> I'm going through hot flashes. Maybe I'm thinking about freaking breeding. I don't know what the hell is going on. Game is in the room. Game, welcome, darling. Come on in. 
<coughs> okay, so your nose was shattered long ago, so I have to need to mouse breed. <laughs> oh, send Joe. <laughs> I'll never live that one down. <laughs> Vendetta. Yeah, okay, so your nose was shattered. Okay, so try to keep chin forward then. Like, breathe like this. <laughs> Don't let the jaw hang slack. Breathe like this. <laughs> we'll say, what the hell are you doing? Breathing, man. <laughs> okay, enough of that. Laughing at my own jokes here. I'm starting to feel like Bob Hope. Also, try not to rest your tongue. Try to keep your tongue in its own space, not resting on the bottom. Oh, not resting on the top. Mm -hmm. Try to keep your tongue not resting on anything. And what happens is it causes mm, indentations. It gives you a finer, a finer looking face. It brings in that, mm, that high cheekbone look. Am I not? Or another thing you can do is just, uh, mm, just walk around. Mm, like a turkey lips or something for a little while. But try not to rest your tongue. My tongue moves constantly. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> My tongue doesn't rest. Yeah. The Phoenix, the only one I know has got melanoma of the tongue. <laughs> Can't take her to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, how do you know if your red wine is expensive? Okay, would you like a glass of red wine? Oh, yes, yes, please. Mm -hmm. You're all hoity-toity, you all that. And a glass of red wine is given to you. Now, when they're not looking, you're thinking, mm, I wonder what kind of wine this is. Is it expensive? Or did they give me the cheap shit underneath the kitchen sink? So you take your baby finger and you put it in the glass. And when you take it out, if your finger has got a red dye on it, that's some very, very good wine. If it comes out with nothing on it, it just drips. They're giving you the kitchen sink stuff. Okay? Just to let you know. So there's a home hack. Not really a home hack, but you're going to know your value when you're with somebody that's offering you a drink. <laughs> um, so I did that one dip your pinky so I remember dip your pinky that doesn't work with white wine though I can't drink the red wine gives me nasty ass headaches <laughs> yeah, add some food coloring see pink add some food coloring yes that's all you gotta do here's the cheap stuff from under the sink a little bit of Red food coloring, brighten it up. <laughs> Shaving cream on your mirrors in your bathroom and on your glasses will stop them from fogging up. Just do not rinse. So you come in from the cold and immediately your glasses fog up and you can't freaking see. I'm shaving cream and just rub it all in there. Don't rinse it. Yes, indeed, Wendy May stops it from steaming up. A box of wine, the top shelf stuff, I was told. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, that's great stuff, though. They give you a good buzz. <laughs> so if you don't have a corkscrew, oh, my God, what are we going to do? What a conundrum. Grab a potato masher and put it on top of the bottle. And then take a screw and screw it in, and the potato masher will hold it. Then just pull. So a screw, a screwdriver, and a potato masher is all you need. <laughs> Someone give me shaving cream. I can't see. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, where am I? Okay. 
So the kids have a juice box. I do this trick all the time. It works well. The kids have a juice box. The grandchildren have come over. And when they finish the juice box, you take it and you listen to it. There's still quite a bit of juice in there. But you can't reach it. What, what to do? And just take the straw and turn it around. So the bent side goes in and it goes right into the corner. Just tip it. And it cleans out the juice box. Not a drop left. Little tiny juice boxes. You know what I mean, Wendy May? Little juice boxes by Allen's or whatever. I don't know what you got there, darling, in the UK. A carton. Yeah, give the kids a carton of juice. Yeah, here's the straw. <laughs> a sucker back, darling. But yeah, just turn the straw around and it gets into the corners. They are called Papas here in Oz. Papas. Why would a juice box be called a Papa? We call carton. You call boxes cartons? <laughs> Not a big carton. Yeah. Here's your juice. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> now, here's a treat. Do try this. Now, I plan on trying it. Peel two or three oranges and throw them in a tall container. So get a container about yay big from the dollar store, something made of glass, and something that has a lid, preferably, doesn't need one. Put those two oranges, peeled oranges, in there, and then fill it up with um, yogurt. Put it in the fridge and let it set. When you pull it out, it'll be like a little log, and you can slice it. And it is the most adorable little thing. It's just all yogurt on the outside and orange in the middle. It's adorable. So do try that. Let me know how it works. Kool-Aid jammers are great. Oh, boy, they're sugary, though. Great full of sugar, though, game. Yeah, that is cute. Try that. Let me know how you feel. So just, just slice it in slices. And just pass it to a friend. Here, try one of these. Then mash up your masher. They have zero sugar. Oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. Okay, I didn't know. I must check that out. I got regular Kool-Aid with no sugar. Just add water. But it's got no substitute sugar or nothing. It's like drinking... Mm, warm colored water or cold colored water there's no taste exactly it, if sugar isn't a problem it's the dyes that make the kids hyper yes indeed phoenix okay i want to peel potatoes very easily Instead of that peeling and peeling or getting a carrot peeler and whipping and peeling. I want to make a potato salad and I got to do all this damn peeling and then boil the potato. No, boil your potatoes until they're cooked and then throw them in ice water for three to five minutes. Then pick the potato up and rub it and the skins just come right off. Then you can prepare it for your salad. And that is so much easier. Um, I live on aspartame. Yeah, I've been getting some pains in my stomach, though, Vendetta. I think it might be the aspartame. I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. But I've been getting pains in my stomach since I started drinking a lot of aspartame. And you can do that with boiled eggs, too. Yes, Sanjel. Yes, you can. But it'll take longer to cook if I boil them whole. And it'll take just as long if you want to friggin' peel them all. Cursing and swearing and it slips off and it runs across the kitchen floor and you got to chase it. And <laughs> I'd sooner just let it boil whole. It causes upset stomach laxative effect. And that's exactly what's happening to me for the last five days. 
Yes, indeed, Wendy May. I didn't know that. And I thought, why the hell, what the hell is going on with my stomach? I don't use a potato peeler. I use a paring knife. Or you peel part of your finger. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Or you peel part of your finger. <laughs> I use a knife. I'm just going to use a sword. Or I'm going to make a potato salad with all the friggin' peels on the potatoes. So, but if you want, just boil them whole and throw them in ice water for three minutes. And it peels right off. There are some things that you should not reheat. And did you know that mushrooms is one of them? Mushrooms can cause upset stomach. And it is advised that you do not reheat mushrooms. And preheated eggs, reheated eggs and omelets. So I got some omelet left over from breakfast. I think I'm going to snack on that. And I'm going to reheat that. The FDA says it's very, very bad for your health. So be careful with reheating eggs and omelets. A bowl of leftover rice, especially if it has not been washed before it was cooked. Make sure, you guys, that you wash your rice before you cook it. And get anything out of there. And sometimes there's some little insects and stuff that hide in there, you know? Um, so it can make you very sick. Breast milk, if you're breastfeeding. Breast milk should never, ever, 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 ever be heated in a microwave. One of the reasons is it will heat unevenly. And it can cause a burn in the baby's mouth. So you can test it on your wrist to say, oh, perfect. But there could be a hot spot. And you don't know about it. And the baby would just start crying with the bottle in his mouth and screaming. And you'd be like, what the hell's going on? So be very careful there. Heat it up in a bottle warmer or heat it up in a pan of water on the stove. Now, oh, you guys are talking about cake. Cake and black coffee. Yeah, no sugar, but not black. Alien green milk is good for you. Well, I, I don't know. What, breast milk? <laughs> alien breast milk? <laughs> well, what other kind of milk would an alien have? <laughs> Game. Just, what have you been playing lately? <laughs> That's from Star Wars. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not a Star Wars fan. <laughs> I watched that one with the uh, the big ship, the Millennium Falcon. I left halfway. Boring. It was the most boring. Boring. Actually, it was blue milk. Oh. Okay. Fruit stickers. Now, here's something you might want to write down. So, the next time you're shopping for fruit, very, very good to know this. You know, those fruit stickers got numbers on them. Look at them. If there's four digits and they start with a three or a four, it means the fruit was grown conventionally with farmer's methods. Good for you. If it starts with a three or a four and it's four digits, good for you. Good. If it is five numbers and it begins with an eight, it means the fruit has been genetically modified. Did you know that? And if it has five numbers and begins with a nine, it is organic. So just to let you know, check that fruit. You don't want to be eating anything which that's genetically modified. If it starts with three numbers, 911, don't eat it. Exactly, game. Exactly. So keep that in mind. Stick with the three, four. 
definitely don't don't start eat anything that starts with an eight. Yes, indeed, ours do too. Wendy May says organic. Um, the pom pom on your hat. It was not there for a decoration. Hey, everybody, the winter caps with the pom pom on it, so cute. It's not there for a decoration. The pom pom was invented for sailors, and it was for a cushion when they banged their heads. And that's what the pom pom was for. <coughs> oh, you banged your head. Oh, let's put a pom pom on your hat. <laughs> there you go. Put your phone on airplane mode when it's charging. It will charge much faster. I tried it today. Yes, it charges much faster. It does. If you don't have a leather cleaner and your, your leather dress boots or your shoes, guys, it looks terrible. They're all dusty looking. Vaseline will make them absolutely beautiful. You don't need leather cleaner. Go get yourself some Vaseline and just rub it in there in another cloth and just dry it all up. And it's shining beautiful. Yes, indeed it is. See, see, you're headed for the naughty corner. See, Bink. <laughs> I'm surprised. See, Bink is headed for the naughty corner. Yes, it does. I cleaned a spot off of Chanel with Vaseline. It worked amazing. Yes, indeed. It works great. Vacuuming. Now, you know, especially me, I'm vacuuming. Done. Just as long as I hit every spot, I think I'm just done. Everything's picked up. Looks good. Looks fresh. No. No. You have missed dust mites. You have missed dead skin cells. So how do you vacuum? You know, it's just terrible. I've been vacuuming for, well, so many freaking years. And I'm just learning how to vacuum. You do it in rows. So you go up and back down. The same row. At least three or four or five times. Up and down, back and forth, three, well, let's do another one, four, and then move over and do another row, up and down, back and forth, back and forth, and make sure that that spot is cleaned. <coughs> This is one of those facts we don't want to know. Yes, indeed. I lather my face with Vaseline when dyeing my beard. I bet you're sexy then, aren't you? I can just imagine how sexy you are. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, where am I? That one's done. Let's talk about sneaking snacks. Okay. So you go into the movies with a friend or a date and they bought the tickets and you feel, okay, I got to buy the food, but you know, it's so damn expensive. And it's not that I don't have the money. It's just, I don't want to spend my money. Oh, what a conundrum. How do I sneak some snacks into the movie theater? Well, if you take the rubber off your hairbrush, okay, so you get a hairbrush and it's got that rubber thing that holds all the bristles, you can peel that off and you can put some M&Ms in there and then you put the rubber back on. So you can just pretend that you're brushing your hair and peel it back and go take a couple M&Ms. So you can do that. <laughs> Ick. <laughs> Just make sure the brush is clean. If you've got really long hair, strawberry, vendetta, 
He got really long hair. You can wrap a bag of popcorn up in it. So you can pretend it's a bun. And then when you get in the movie theater, pull the pin, comes down, there's a bag of popcorn on your head. So there you go. You can do that too. All right. So hide the bag of popcorn up in your hair. Or Skittles and chocolate bars, whatever you want to put up in there. You can get a whole bag of mini bars and stuff like that. And just wrap it all up in your hair. Have a nice high bun. Look like Marge Simpson. Pull it down and you get snacks for everybody. You can also poke a hole through a freezer baggie and insert a thin hose. Glue it so it doesn't leak. Just some little bit of hot glue to glue it together. And then fill the bag with pot. You know, that's, there you go. So we got a hair head full and a hair full of snacks. We got the pop in the baggie with a hose. <laughs> And we got the hairbrush standing by with more snacks. So there you go. If popcorn goes in my hair, it will be lost forever. <laughs> Strawberry. Strawberry's got some long hair. Oh, God. Really long. <laughs> I just put them in my bag. Yeah. But you know what? They're always suspicious if you walk in with a bag. And they will go around, they'll watch you. You don't want to be thrown out of the movie theater for bringing in snacks. Cowboy just come into the room. You can wear rubber shoes to avoid a lightning strike. Well, yeah, I'm okay. Great. God love you, darling. Thanks for sharing. Cowboy. Hello, darling. Nobody's watching here. That's good, Senjo. Advertising. Oh, you see the food uh, on the advertisements, and it's just enough to, it makes your mouth water. It's like, oh, I would love to have a hamburger right now. And it's like, I'm starving. To make cheese look very gooey and stretchy on a pizza, they use white glue. So you see them pulling the pizza out in the strings of cheese. It's glue, just to let you know. Also, glue and warm water is added into a bowl. And then they put pieces of cereal and fruit on it. And it doesn't sink. So you see the cereal, all fresh looking. Uh, it's just stuck in glue. So, hairspray on fruit makes it look shiny and fresh and yummy. Hairspray. Lip gloss is used to deepen the color of strawberries. You say, look at those ripe, red, fresh strawberries. I can never find strawberries like that, uh, like that in my grocery store. That's because they don't exist. Take a mini muffin. This one will scare the shit out of you. <laughs> this one will scare the crap out of you. You know those little mini muffins? Oh, they're so good. They even have them for kids, little mini muffins for kids. Take a mini muffin and put it in a strainer and pour warm water over it. And just move it around your finger and you'll notice that the whole muffin will disintegrate and go down the drain. But there is one little glob that will sit on the bottom of the strainer. And you'll say, what the hell is that? And you'll take it out and you'll pull it. And it's fibers. And this, my darling, is what is called synthetic fibers. And these are spread throughout the muffin. So just to let you know, take that chocolate chip muffin. I'd be interested in knowing what's left in that. Take that chocolate chip muffin if you don't mind wasting it by running water over it but synthetic fibers. Fake honey. Put some in a bowl and add some hot water. Swish it around. Look at it. Swish it around. It just turns to sugar. That's all you can tell. It's not real honey. Real honey 
Well, actually, you will actually see a honeycomb pattern. Yes, you will actually see a honeycomb pattern. So put real honey in there and some hot water and swish it around, and you'll be amazed. But that looks just like a honeycomb. That is real honey. Real honey, you see a bee. <laughs> and when they say honey never spoils, make sure it's real honey. Because I've seen honey with mold on it after years and years. It's real honey that doesn't spoil. Two glasses half full of hot water. One glass, two glass, half full of hot water. One teaspoon of butter in one glass and one teaspoon of margarine in the other glass. Stir the one with the butter, it dissolves. What happens to the, to the margarine? Stir it, it doesn't break down. It just turns into globs and sticks together. Real honey is very expensive, yes. But it's good for you. It's not a lot of sugar. It's real honey. It floats, yes. And, and it will become in little beads. And then they just cling together like atoms. <laughs> and expensive, yes. When you think of real butter. But is it worth it? Are you worth it? Yes, you are. Okay, so yes, you are worth it, my darlings, 100%. You just took muffins out of the oven. Mm. Muffins come out of the oven. You baked them yourself. You know there's no synthetic uh, fibers. I was going to say spiders. <laughs> there's no th synthetic spiders in your muffins. You made it yourself. <laughs> I really like that bee spittle. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but you look and there's cracks, there's a couple of cracks, and you think, oh, they didn't come out like totally perfect. Take the bottom of a glass and press it down gently on each one. Just rub it to the next one and rub it. And it flattens them all out. And it gives you a nice muffin top. And it gives you, it fills in the cracks and brings everything even. Okay, so try that. My doctor freaked when I told him I eat real butter. Not many people to eat real butter. Not many. Yes, it smells so good. Detta feeds muffins to her spiders. <laughs> Keep your cardboard egg cartons. Don't throw them away. Why? Well... You can cut them to fit the shelf on the inside of your fridge door. Now you open up your fridge, you get some shelves, right? And you get all kinds of condiments. The place is a, is a hell of a mess. Cut them and then put them in on the bottom of the shelf. Then turn your condiments, your ketchup, upside down and stick it in. It keeps everything nice and neat. And it holds it there. It holds the caps of your condiments. So try that. If you want to get really um, artistic, you can paint them. You know? Try that. See if that works for you. You got frozen butter. I can't get it on my bread. Frozen like a rock. Put it in a garlic press and put it on your bread. So garlic press, you still really won't be able to spread it, but you'll get nice streams of butter throughout this bread. Beautiful. We have a spider named Teddy. She's a kitten, a kitten spider. I worked with a Gus, Gus the spider. Okay, Tassimo. Who out there has a Tassimo? Who? Who has a Tassimo? And drinking the coffee with a Tassimo, them little tiny flat cups, 
Anybody? Cheers. You know, I have a tassima. Nobody? Nobody has a tassima? Okay. A tassa what? It's a tassimo, a coffee machine, but it takes a disc. Put the disc in, you shut it down, and <laughs> seriously, you guys must have a tassimo. No? You don't have a tassimo? Oh, Senjo, strawberry, no? Kerrigan? Diane? A Kerrigan? Does anybody know that name? Kerrigan? Keurig? A Keurig? But a Keurig takes some cups. A Tassimo takes a disc. So we have Keurig takes a cup, and Tassimo takes a disc. No, not an espresso. So I tried it, but it doesn't work. They say that uh, if you have a Tassimo, and you know for eight little tiny discs, they're almost 12 bucks. And that's very expensive for eight cups of coffee, for me anyway. But it says that you can just refill them with your own ground coffee. And then put aluminum foil over it and stick it in, and it works. And it doesn't work. I filled it up with ground coffee. I put the aluminum foil over I tucked it all around. For those of you who have K-cups for Keurig, Maybe you can try it with Keurig cups and see if that works. I fill them up with ground coffee. But I will tell you that with Tassimo, it does not work. You do that with Keurig. So it works with the Keurig then, says Diane. Coffee a little crunchy. <laughs> but it does not work on the Tassimo. I tried over and over and over and over. Diane, it works. Hmm. Yes, indeed, Wolfman. Sounds good. Keurig has refillable coffee pods. Oh, by God, I didn't know that. I must get a Keurig. I must get a Keurig. I've got the coffee beans. I've got the grinder. You need the barcode on the top for Tassimo. Oh, is that what it is? You need the barcode. Oh... Sneaky. Okay. You know what I'm going to try to do, Michelle? When I peel off the top, I'm going to put the ground coffee in, the, in it, refill it. And then I'm going to put the aluminum foil over the top. And then just before I put it in, I'm going to slip that last top. I'm going to slip that in and see if that'll work. You know what I mean? I want to see if that'll work. Um, now, let's go to the toilet. Yes, come on now, everyone. Let's go into the toilet. Now the toilet is all stopped up. Uh, okay, now, first, let's make sure that you know, like, it, it's, it's a little bit stopped up, but... It's not full of poo, all right? And you're going to need a plumber for that. It's not full of poo, but it's, it's, it's stopped up a bit. Uh, yeah, and the plunger is not really taking care of it. Yes, indeed. Thank you, C. But put some dish soap in there. Just put some dish soap in there and let it sit for a little while. Then put a gallon of hot water. Pour it in slowly. Be careful. Hot water. And just pour it in there. And wait a moment. Let that dish soap get all settled up there with that hot water. And then just um, flush. And that should get rid of your clog. Okay? Paper towels when the filters run out. <laughs> I wonder how that will work. I don't know if that will work. But I do know that regs work. If you got regs, make sure they're good and clean, okay? Just cut them in circles and put a reg in there, thin, thin cotton. And then put your coffee in 
Uh, I know rags work. I used to wash them all the time. <laughs> I used to be very, very poor. <laughs> so rags do wash, and, and they do work. Now, to check for any leaks around the toilet, add some food coloring into the tank. Uh, keep an eye for any colored water on the floor. Because sometimes uh, leaks go unnoticed. There's someone standing behind me. Did anybody see any kind of movement there? <laughs> Reverend Marie, you in the room? Okay. Wendy May, did you pick anything up there? Anybody pick anything up there? I just had someone standing there behind me. Okay, darling. All right, darling. Thank you. Yep, to the right side. It could have been the candles flicker flame. It could have been, and it just sort of looked real fast. It could be. Gregorius, thank you. Could be. Spirit touched my hair twice earlier. I was only touched by spirit, I think, maybe once. The electricity was incredible. Yeah, did you, Phoenix? Yeah, I definitely saw something. Definitely. That's why I like to dim the lights in the back. There's something about spirit when the lights are dim. Or when walls are dark, you can really pick up spirit and orbs. Right before you said it. Mm -hmm. I was going off the phone, so I missed it. I get that it's your grandpa. My grandpa? You saw Vendetta? You rewound it? You saw? To me, it was to my, to my left. Yes, left, right, back there. It's funny you should say that, Wendy May, but Maximus is not that tall. Oh, Jesus was tall. But my Maximus, I was going to put a picture of him on here tonight on the fun facts. But for some reason, it wouldn't go on. Your left, my right. Yes, indeed, Diane. Yes, indeed. Welcome back, Reverend. Now let's talk about etiquette in different parts of the world. Now, if you're going to go to Thailand, we're going to Thailand. Don't use a fork. Now, I, I don't know if this is today, today's world, but for etiquette, you do not use a fork. In China, you don't clean your plate. You leave some on there. If you clean your plate, it means the hostess did not give you enough to eat. And so you had to eat it all. So. <laughs> and also make sure you belch afterwards. In China. In Ethiopia, you share a plate. It's a great big plate. And it's full of all kinds of stuff right in the middle of the table. And they will turn it. You cannot reach over and say, oh, look at those buns over there and reach over. No, that's rude. You can only take what's close to you. You got to wait for the buns to come over, even if they're all gone. So you got to take whatever is near you and you eat the meat last in Ethiopia. In Italy, never ask for extra cheese. It is an insult to the chef. Well, in Italy, maybe, but in the restaurants here, if you get any pasta, first thing to do is parmesan. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> but in Italy, don't ask for extra cheese. In Portugal, never ask for salt and pepper. Never. Zenja, yes, that's true. In Japan, never stand your chopsticks up in your rice. Rude. Put them down on the side. Never take your chopsticks and stand them in the rice. In the Middle East, and that makes me wonder how the hell they prepare, they prepare food. 
you do not touch food with your left hand because that's your bathroom hand. That's your bathroom hand is the left hand. So you never touch food. How the, how the hell do you cook? How do you cook? And it did show this woman, her hand, her left hand was up in the air and she was cooking and flipping eggs and stuff with her right hand. But this hand was wet. Like it had some kind of liquid on it. So I know damn well. I mean, this hand should be dry, right? But her hand was like it had some kind of liquid on it. So she obviously was doing something with her left hand there. Unless she just come from the toilet and never, never friggin', I don't know, maybe peed all over her hands or something. And dripping in pee. And hey, don't worry, I'm using my right hand. What if you're left-handed? Yes, right. I guess in the Middle East, you're just screwed, darling. <laughs> I'm left-handed. <laughs> in Georgia, don't slowly sip your wine at a wedding. Okay, now, this is etiquette. This is what's supposed to be at a wedding in Georgia. You wait for the speech to finish, and then you take the glass of wine, and you Suck her back in one mouthful. You drain it. You never sip your wine. And then, oh, here comes another speech. I'll have another glass of wine, please. And don't sip while they're talking. Not if it's like some real big, yeah, you just throw it back. That's right, see, Bink. You throw it back. And in Japan, don't fill your own glass. It's disrespectful. Don't fill your own glass. You can fill somebody else's glass, but that someone else must in turn fill yours in Japan. So there you go. You heard it all here. <laughs> I'd be drunk after one speech. Yes, indeed. Yeah, you would be, Zenjo. You'd be drunk in no time. He loves cucumbers and parsnips. Who's that, Gus? <laughs> Why do they all dance on the tables? <laughs> oh, Jet. Oh, okay. Jet. Jet loves cucumbers and parsnips. Oh, God, love them. Okay. Not Gus. <laughs> Not Gus the spider. Uh, speaking about animals that like to eat weird things, that uh, this kitten that I have, it'll eat anything. He'll eat this freaking arse out of a skunk if you gave it to him. Yeah, you know, it just eats. I was telling um, Phoenix about it. Like, does a cat beat you into the kitchen? It doesn't matter what you have. I, I had a little small bowl of ice cream. It's a bloody thing, man. I, I was fighting it off. I had to take a little bit of ice cream and put it in a dish and say, here, eat it. Yeah, and it would eat it. And it doesn't matter what you're eating. This cat, man, it'll eat anything. Does not like potato chips. I, I, I buy those veggie sticks. Oh, those veggie sticks are good. They're very low in calories. And he, he don't want to eat those. So they love milk. Yes, they do. But from what I hear, milk is not good for a cat. Even though it, we grew up with a bowl of milk for the cat. But it's not supposed to be good for their digestive. And as for Uni, I was really thinking, I don't really want to name him Uni. It was more like a joke um, that we had online here in the chat. And there was a reason I spelled it U-N-I, but I could never figure out what it was. Because if you remember, you guys... That uni was U-N-E, but I spelled it with an I. Now I'm like, what? Why did I spell it U-N-I? Now, he's been here for a while now, and he knows his name is Uni. But I thought, you know what? June was Uni. That's right. It's a sea urchin, says Senjo. Well, with U-N-I, I figured it would be universe. So I'm, I just thought his name is 
universe. <laughs> I'm thinking about calling the kitten. Um, I'm thinking about calling the kitten Tigger. Uh, my youngest daughter came to see him. My grandson fell absolutely in love with him. Call him bastard. Up. <laughs> yeah, Charlie. He won't come to Charlie. And I don't want to call him kitten all the time because he's going to grow up to be a big cat. So I thought, you know what? I had a cat that looks exactly like him. My youngest daughter said, oh, my God, he's a spitting image of Tigger. So I think I'm going to name him Tigger. Yeah. Or Bastardo. You know, something like that. Hey, Tony. Uh, Destiny. Uh, yeah, female black kitten named Destiny. One year old. Mine's a male. But you know what? Everything is acceptable in today's world. I could call him. I could call him Destiny. Right? Call him Universe. Verse, or he's Cliff, he's Cliff, or Garfield, but Garfield's orange. Tigger is super cute, yeah. He's Cliff. Jeez, that's a hell of a mouthful. He's Cliff. <laughs> My black kitten is a male four months old named Midnight, and I like that name too. I love Garfield, Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger too. She adopted me. I believe you, Tony. I believe you. Snarky, I bet he comes when you call that name. Now, lately I've just been calling him Kitten, but he doesn't even listen to that. He's still very young. Um, he cat. And that's Vendetta. I was thinking about um, may, maybe calling him uh, Tom Puss. Now, Tom Puss is a, um, a Newfoundland name for a male cat. Oh, look, it's old Tom Puss. So I was able to call him Tom Puss. He's seven months. Felix. Yeah, Felix was black and white cat. It's wabbit season. The first cat was solid black and hot day around Halloween. Cashed her spooky. Called her spooky? Well, San Joe is <laughs> God lovely. <laughs> I know I'm not going to laugh because I I know what it's like on that side. Uh, I was on Reverend Marie's uh, before I came out here, and I was typing. And it was like, what the hell am I typing? <laughs> I remember Fritz the cat, cowboy. <laughs> Why not? I'm cracking up. Yes, indeed. I know. You just never know. <laughs> just as long as we can understand what you're saying, we're okay. <laughs> but I thought maybe Tom Puss. Or, hi, Forlorn Hope. Or maybe um, Miss Puss, even though it's a guy. I mean, it's just it's the world, right? He, he can be Miss Puss if he wants to be a Miss Puss. Right? <laughs> Miss Puss. <laughs> or Tom Puss. I really don't know what to call him. Uh, I'm looking for names. <laughs> the cat identifies as a dog. Yeah. I could call him Woofy. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Vendetta. I could call him Woofy. <laughs> I'm always in for shock, you know. Jupiter, Jupiter, Neptune, Neptune, Jupiter or Neptune, Pisces, right? I could name him Pisces. <laughs> Some days I wish he was pieces of Pisces. <laughs> Got a Frankie, Gracie. And a teddy over here. Midnight hour. Yes, midnight hour. <laughs> so, yeah, there's just some things I thought I would throw out there. Orion. Yeah. Men in Black. Orion. I like that name. 
Miracle. Yes, indeed, Miracle. Name him Squirrel. And every time you yell Squirrel, they will both come. Squirrel! <laughs> oh, my God. Funny stuff. Funny stuff, you guys. So I want to thank you all. I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me tonight and joining Spirit. No, I haven't yet, Phoenix. I'm going to try that. Emperor. Mm -hmm. Emperor. A sunshine. A putty. And Ivana Kilru. Ivana. Ivana Kilru. Putty. Putty tat. I taught, I taught putty tat. Thank you, darling. Thank you for the laughs, you guys. Uh, I mean, you, you guys keep me going so I can keep you going. Thank you so much. We had 17 come in the room. Again, I just have to reach out to silent watchers. Join us next time and, and we'll find something and just come out and laugh. Laughter is good for the soul and it helps you heal. Um, also, one more thing. This weekend, this weekend is Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. I'm sorry, there will be no live chat on Saturday night. I'm so sorry to have to inform you of that. So, live chat will be canceled for Saturday night, but we'll see you next Tuesday night for sure. Okay? I want to say thank you so much to my moderators for coming out, keeping an eye on things. Saturday is wrestling. We forgive you. Okay, bless your heart. I will be on vacation Tuesday, but I try and join the chat. Bless your heart, darling. Happy what you it Boxing Day. Happy what you Boxing Day. Bless your heart, darling. You got it, pal. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much, darling. It's going to be a busy weekend. I got the grandchildren. I got two turkey dinners lined up. Whoa. Yummy, yummy. Next time you see me, I'm going to... Welcome to readings. <laughs> All right. Sunday's football. Okay. God love you, darlings. Nancy Fake, keep warm, darling. Nancy, we're going down to nine degrees on Sunday. Nine. Get your winter woolies out, darling. Thinking of you. Blessings, everyone. Namaste. Namaste.